supraspinatus is infraspinatus. Obviously, supra is above, infra is below. It's the medial three quarters of the uh, infraspinous fossa of the scapula and the fibrous intermuscular septum. It inserts into the medial facet of the greater tuberosity of the humerus and the capsule of the shoulder joint and is involved in laterally rotating the arm and stabilizing the shoulder joint. So basically you will get the patient or the client to just bring your hand out to the side like this and relax. And if I do it against, again, push against me and you can feel it bulking up just here and relax. So that's the, the infraspinatus uh, attachment. It can cause a, a deep sort of shoulder pain and, and um, also the pain is in, in, in the area of the biceps brachii and down the side of the shoulder. It may even radiate as far as the far thumb. It can be sometimes be severe pain in the anterior deltoid and the uh, bicipital groove. Uh, these are often common aspects of, of these, these myofascial trigger points. And the pain is also uh, experienced in the posterior part of the neck. These myofascial trigger points can cause system, uh, systems that are often mistaken for ad adhesive castrolitis or frozen shoulder. So it's quite an important muscle. So often somebody may be coming in with might be a frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis, and by needling this this area and uh, along with uh, um, the teres um, uh, minor muscles, that you can have uh, quite an effect on the on the frozen shoulder. So again. Just to re reiterate, the pain can be felt over the deltoid. It can go all the way down the front of the arm, even down to the wrist. There can also be some as posterior aspect of, of pain from it as well. So we'll just have a look at the infraspinatus needling. Uh, for that, we need to get the, uh, the patient to, to lie on their front. So we can often do this, uh, again, side lying. Obviously, the patient will lie on the uninvolved shoulder, similar to supraspinatus. I, I just prefer prime because the patient is usually more relaxed. Again, uh, you can use a, a up to a 30 millimeter needle. Be careful, you don't want to be going straight down in a, a, a posterior anterior, anterior direction because that could, if there is any fenestration in the, the scapula, these little holes in the scapula, you could go through that. So one would want to come at a tangential angle uh, to and ensure complete safety. One would needle in a, a medial to lateral direction. So one could just get the patient, if you just sort of kind of put your arm like this, and just what I want you to do is just turn it up like that and relax. And you can feel, where you feel the spine and the scapula do that movement again. And now I can feel the infraspinatus there, relax, find the trigger point. I can then try and grip it if I can, and try and lift it off the scapula, come from a medial lateral direction in this sort of tangential angle. Uh, sometimes I can actually go from an inferior uh, inferior medial direction or a superior medial direction, but often I find just pincering the, the muscle itself and then going into it is very, very useful. Um, use a shallow angle, locate the spine in the scapula and just insert the needle again. So again, I would just get them to turn their hand, find them infraspinatus, just relax, tighten off there and into the uh, infraspinatus and I usually use a pincer grip and I'm quite successful with that. The patient again can be prone or side lying. Similar sort of reason, sometimes it's easier just to have them in side lying because it lifts the, the body up and it's a little easier to do it. Also, I think sometimes when it's prone and you're trying to do these sort of tangential angles, it, the tendency may be to go in a posterior or anterior direction and you're less likely to do so if they're side lying because you're gonna running along the side of the, the scapula. Find the medial border of the scapula, come down to the inferior angle, and one can find pretty much the scapula there, and you know infraspinatus is gonna be in, in this area here underneath the spine of the scapula, those being the border spine of scapula, medial border of scapula, uh, lateral border of scapula. So you'll find the, the trigger points in of infraspinatus. If you want, you can get the, the patient to just bend his arm and just rotate it out like this so you can feel the muscle bulk underneath your, your fingers. Again, a 30 millimeter needle. Again, I'm using a larger one just for ease of viewing. Tangenital angle, as I said, you don't want to be going in a, anterior, a posterior anterior direction simply because of the similar thing with supraspinatus, these fenestrations and the dangers that may be caused with those. 
one would needle from a medial to lateral direction, but sometimes it's possible to, to uh, needle the inferior portion down here in an inferior medial direction or in a superior lateral direction. So we're coming inferior medial, superior lateral in the bottom part of the infraspinatus. Remember, you could be around teres minor, teres major in those areas as well, or in a medial to lateral direction, needling there. Just be careful. You stay below the spine of the the, um, the spine of the scapula and don't go in a posterior anterior direction because you may go through the muscle and through the actual scapula itself. If you found this video useful and want to see more like this, make sure you subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification bell.